I'll go. Yes, guys, and welcome to day two of CoptersCom. Man, day one was awesome, wasn't it, Steve? That was mind blowing. <laughs> mind blowing. You think you've done this a long time and you hear what people have been saying about all the different application uses for drones, and you just think, God, I thought I was an expert in this. I had no idea some of the applications we used yesterday. It's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Big uh, thanks to all our partners, suppliers, and uh, customers and who got involved as well. I mean, there were some amazing things discussed. We'd, we went from the M300, we had the Surveying Summit with Phase 1, Buckingham Group, Precision Air with Surveys. With Chris doing his uh, how he started a drone business in 12 weeks, with the Eye in the Sky Summit with Lorenz Technology Plants, Brugantes, and Typhon. I know a lot of people got excited about that one. Did they? Yeah, I know. A lot of good responses from that one. I think that had 140 something views on the day, and a lot of people getting back in touch with all the information. Yeah. So keep it coming, guys. Yeah, I love that. And then obviously with the Elios 2, with flyability and Raptor UES later in the day. And then um, we also had how to scale your drone business with Pete. And we obviously had a bit of technical uh, difficulties with that. And what we're going to do, it happens. Yeah, it happens we're, yeah. we're going, we're doing uh, 17 events over two days. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to get that one sorted out and done again. But what we'd like to say is that um, if you guys have got any feedback, because at the end of the day, we're all one in the drone community. So if you guys have any feedback, just let us know. Um, let us know in the chats, give us back, let us know how we're doing, let us know how we can improve. We're going to send a survey out afterwards as well um, because we will be doing this again because it has been amazing. And we've got chat up, so if anybody's got any questions for Steve and I, just let us know, um, put them in the chat, put them in the questions, we will get it. We've got a couple of good people on. We've got Gareth, Trish, Ray, Francis, Charlie, um, Charlie Clark. I'm loving your comment. Looking forward to another day of great content. Likewise, man, likewise. We don't know where it's going to go, but we have an amazing day planned. I mean, could it top yesterday? I don't know. There's more of them, though, today. There's more of them today. There's more. That was like a brain workout yesterday. Today, you've got to take it, take it all in. We're going to go through a few highlights this morning of exactly what we're going to cover today. But we're going to go through the highlights from yesterday as well. Yeah, we've got so some video. We've got some videos. We've got some great stuff to show you. What we've what we've picked out, cherry picked from a few of the different. Um, Absolutely. Well, um, and what our team, amazing team, who pulled the event together, um, they've left me new in charge of um, playing the clips. So <laughs> it, it, it will go wrong. So just bear with us. We've got two different uh, links to um, play clips from. But not only that, not only are we going to do a recap of um, some of the key points from yesterday and highlights, we also, we were going to be doing this uh, Drones for Good Morning show with Drone Prep. They've been doing some amazing stuff and um, we were going to have Gareth and Emily on it, but um, they're, just, they're just busy doing uh, great things, pushing the industry forward. Um, real trailblazers and innovators, some of the stuff that they're doing, which we're going to talk about. Um, and we're going to play some highlights because what we did, we did a pre-record with them. And it's a special bit of content. It's a full-length webinar, 40 minutes of just awesomeness with um, myself, Emily, and Gareth just talking about everything from what they're doing uh, with the Royal Mill um, delivery uh, trial in uh, the Isle of Mull, where they're doing a consultation with 3,000 um, residents, where they're going to have uh, parcels delivered by the Royal Mail. It's so right. cool. Right. Um, the, I mean, some of the stuff that we were talking about as well in terms of um, how that, um, the work that they're doing, that uh, delivery is, is saving lives and save, And one of the comments they said was like saving people's eyesight because the NHS deliveries get yeah. to uh, these hard to reach locations. It's an absolute game changer. I've just seen a comment coming from Adrian. Brilliant. We'll dress George up in a uh, drone costume next time, don't we? <laughs> Adrian. <Make> sure <laughs> who, who is this Adrian? It's like, <laughs> I absolutely love that. Um, <laughs> and then with the drone prep one, we went, uh, we talked about everything from the drone ports that are going to be coming up um, to um amazing uh, project that they did uh, down in uh, down southwest in Cornwall, I believe it was, with um, the agriculture and a farm that was um, really advanced uh, with the technology, cows with Fitbits. It was amazing. I thought you so, wanted them to get fatter, not thinner. 
Cows. What, cows? Yeah. No, no, no. Well, I, I did ask Gareth about how many steps was the daily <laughs> air recommendation for cows. We didn't know. We didn't go into that depth because we brought it back to drones. But um, that video will be um, available, the full video, the full interview, because trust me, you don't want to miss that. They will be available on the Copters.com website. Brilliant. So, do you know what we should do? And we'll play some highlights today as well, which will be great. But what we're going to do is... Let's talk about what's happening today before we recap Let's and give some it. highlights from yesterday. That's exactly what we should do. So today, what do we have? We've obviously got uh, you and me. We've got you and I doing a little bit of a, um, a little bit of drones for good with uh, drone prep. We'll play that shortly. Um, give you some highlights, but then also we'll send the link to the full uh, full webinar a little bit later on. That'd be great. Then Amazing. we go into the energy summit with Sellafield, Northumbria Water, Nextworks Three, and Seven Trent which is really exciting for this one. Now, if you've not, um, if you are a drone service provider or, you're in, or you work in the energy sector, this is going to be perfect for you. It's a huge market out there to earn money uh, doing drone service work from the energy sector. We're going to be talking to Northumbria and Seven Trent about different options of how they've managed to, uh, what they're looking at bringing drone service providers in to do and the application they use for. And then also Networks 3, who are probably leading the way when it comes to this sort of work. Uh, they've worked, they've been a company around since 1993, done a lot of work. We've got Caroline from Networks 3 coming on to talk a little bit more about that. And then we have 11.45 to 12.30, saving the environment with Wintra and Project Seagrass. Really looking forward to that one. That That's will be great. awesome. We've got uh, Jim Pick from Copters, we've got Terrence from Wintra, and we've got Dr. Richard Lilly from Project Seagrass, and you'll be able to hear all about the amazing things that they're um, doing uh, to tackle climate change. Unbelievable. What they're doing. Drones. Exactly. That's unbelievable. They're using the Wintra to scan huge areas of land over the north coast of Scotland, looking at seagrass itself, um, which has deplenished quite a lot over the last years, decades, um, and we're looking at replenishing that, and that's how Drones for Good can really work within that sector as well. Then we move on to a really exciting one, um, Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance, which we've started having a few trickles through now. We know quite a few of our customers now have them in their possession, the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance, um, and we've got a lot of orders on as well, so we'll be fiddling these out as soon as they come through. So we're going to go into a little more detail with that. GeoAccess have done some great case studies with us, and they'll be doing a live case study with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance. So what can possibly go wrong there? Uh, quite a lot, <laughs> quite a lot. Um, but that's the that's the fun of it. Exactly. Isn't it? That's, the, that's the danger. And then straight after that, we go into launch in 60 seconds, um, and that is a big showcase of the Parrot and Appy USA with Sam Dennett from Copters and Asif from uh, Parrot. And that will be... Amazing, because that's a, that's a killer drone, that, isn't it? That's definitely, that's and definitely. And the ecosystem around it as well, so... Um, this, this drone is, um, it's made in USA, Parrot, a French company. They work a lot with the military, they work a lot with public safety, they work a lot with search and rescue. It's this waterproof, high-zoom, high-resolution thermal imaging drone that can fly at ridiculous speeds, and but it also works with all other different hardware, software. So it's fantastic and it's really insightful to see what ASIF brings uh, and obviously what Sam's seen use applications for, again, within defence, public safety and military. And then we move on. And what do we have? Because so, it's not all about the drones, is it? Not all about the it's drones. not all about the drones and this is it. It's like we move on and it's uh, with Pix 4D and that's at 3.45 to 4.30 British Standard Time and 9.45 if you're tuning in. Um, from the US of A, and that is how to get the most out of your survey data with PIX4D, and that's with uh, Jim Pick from Copters, Nate from PIX4D, and can you pronounce this one for me? Perangelo? Perangelo, got it. Did I get it right? PIX4D, yes, amazing. And that will be that will be awesome as well, because it's not just about um, putting a drone in the sky, it's about what you do with the data, how, how you store it, uh, well, the quality, how you store it, how you package it up, how you report it, how quickly you can get it into your key stakeholders' hands. Definitely. And just so you know, we'll move on to the next one now, but between each one of these summits, we've got 20 minutes to half an hour where you can have a few to one uh, with one of our UAV strategists here. We'll send a link in the in the uh, drop-down so you can join after any of the webinars going throughout the day. 
where you'll be able to ask any questions you may have one on one as well. But then after Steve, the survey, Steve, goes, Steve, we won't be doing that today. We're not doing that. We're today. not doing that today. We're not doing that today. Oh, we're changing. We're changing the format. We're changing the format just so we can keep the flow going nice and easy. So it's all about the live commentary on our okay. Twitter and Facebook page. And well, Tom's uh, going to be lonely. Then he's ready for everyone. Yeah, I bet he is. <laughs> yeah, I bet he is. I bet he is. Um, no, what we're doing is we want to, um, just so it's more manage manageable, what happened yesterday is we had a lot of people trying to get into uh, rooms and because it could only hold eight, we thought, you know what, we've got to open this up a little bit. So Twitter and Facebook, get the questions on there and if we want to do one-to-ones, just get in touch and we'll book them in yeah. if you want to speak Perfect. to the UAV strategist. And Perfect. then that'll work better and it'll avoid disappointment. Great. So that's, that's how we're going to do that. But, Public Mr. Safety Summit next. <laughs> Northampton Search and Rescue, Blur, Norfolk Fire, and West Yorkshire Police. And they're all coming into one place and they're going to be doing a huge demonstration of, again, how they're using drones, uh, different applications. I love that word applications because it's not about flying the drone, it's not necessarily about the hardware, the software. It's all about what the what on earth people are using them for. You yeah, know? Absolutely. Every, absolutely. Every day we have a conversation in here where we'll bring up. Cops' mission is to revolutionise organisations using drones. And we ask our guys this every day. Name a new organisation that's revolutionising using drones. And it's different every day. Somebody comes up with these new mad ideas. So it'd be great to see what they're used for within public safety now, the military, who've had them a while, and they're maturing in these, in these uh, verticals. So it'd be brilliant to see what they're using for. So that's, that's fantastic. And that's with... I mean, we've got some amazing people on that. We've got uh, not, we've got Nick from Northampton Search and Rescue. We've got Randall Warnish from Randall. Flair. Cool. He's like a godfather of the exactly. drone industry. He's been there pretty much from the start. Started at DJI. He's now at Flair, doing amazing things. Travelled around the globe, just finding out what people are doing um, and how they're innovating with the technology. So, he, if you just have any interest in drones, you want to listen to this man and you want to follow him. He does some amazing webinars as well of his own. Yeah. Um, yeah, Randall, yeah, yeah. Very knowledgeable guy. And then you got uh, Perry Smith from Norfolk Fire, and then we've got West Yorkshire Police on that one as well. So we've got a, a, a number of different people. So like Steve's saying, you're going to get a lot of um, different applications and use cases, and it'll be great to answer you, get your uh, questions in the chat to this uh, guys, to these guys as well. It's, it's we're, we're really lucky to have someone like Perry. Feel free to ask. Well. We should be able to answer anything that comes through uh, this morning as well. That'd be great. We'll give you sort of ideas for the day ahead. Finally. <laughs> Finally, we've got the Drone Recognition Awards, the Copters Recognitions Awards. Please, please, please get your votes in today by 12 p.m. We'll drop the uh, link. Can we drop the link in the bio, Chelsea, for the, how, how we can do that and how people can nominate? Yeah, 12.30, it closes. And what are we giving away to the winner? The winner gets a £1,000 worth of training vouchers with Copters. So... What kind of training can you do? If you've already got your PIFCO GVC, what other kind of courses do we have to see? What can you spend that on? Well, you can level up. So you can level up. You can do the off-ball five course, which will be, which is just brilliant. So if you're running a drone team, or if you want to get that little step ahead of the competition, or if you're excited to bring drones into your organisation, come in and do the off-call five course. Uh, that's something that will level you up. And going forward as well, when we're looking into the new rules, regulation changes, looking in BVLOS, looking at, flying heavier drones, that's only going to put you in good stead because it's going to give you that little bit more knowledge uh, about how to move them to the next level. There's also, I you can that. then go into the type-specific courses. Yeah, 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 so yeah you absolutely. Could use, and you could pretty much get, for that for that money, you could buy all of them and have a little bit remaining. Be nice. <laughs> but you Basically, can, there's loads of things you can loads do. Of things you can but do. What, do you know what? We hear this a lot with people coming in and um, the product-specific courses are really um, important because a lot of people will get a GVC, yeah. But then um, they need to, they'll have a number of different drones and it's like, okay, so how do I use this drone in certain um, cases and applications? And it's like, you can have the GVC, but if you have a, um, I don't know, Mavic 2 uh, Enterprise Advance and then you have a Parrot Nappy uh, USA, I'm just, I'm just pull, yeah. pulling two drones up, um, you, they've got different, you've got to use them differently. Exactly. And that's the thing, isn't it? And that's why when people come into us and talk to talk to copters about how they can uh, use their applications, what they're using them for, that's what we like to say differentiates itself from everybody else because we can actually point you down the right route. You know, if you come in and say, I need this for thermography, I need this, we might say, you know what, you don't need to spend that sort of money on that drone. 
you know, the Mavic series is brilliant. You can spend yeah, a little yeah. bit less and have this. Or you might say, actually, what you wanted to do and you want an actual return on investment, you might be best off with your experience going for the going for one up. But we're here for these discussions. Again, if you want to book a one on one, you want to know about some of the offers that we've got going on over these these few days, or if you just want to chat to understand really how your how you can implement drones into an organization or start your own drone business, please feel free to get in touch. Absolutely. Um, we'll Absolutely. Be. Um, and then if you want to access any resources, um, just visit Copterscon, just keep it up, uh, Copterscon resources, um, forward slash resources, and you'll be able to download training brochures, surveying, uh, drones for surveying buyer's guides, um, inspection buyer guides, the, the, the whole shebang. So it's all there for you. I'm just going through some of the comments before we crack on to the day highlights because there's some doozies in here. <laughs> James Atkins, just missing some disco lights and walk on music for your entrance. I've got the disco lights. Oh, no, it's it's this. It's this. Can't, you can't see it, but we got something. We got some in there. We got something. I disco. think that's for the screen, though. Um, so we, we were halfway there. We didn't want to go too far. We didn't want to go too far with the 80s thing. Um, and then we had someone down here as well. And they the referenced someone, and I'm thinking, um, do I remember these guys? So where is it here? Just before we move on, yeah, Tony Phillips. Anyone remember Smashy and Nicey? Who's Smashy and Nicey? Smashy and Nicey. I don't know. It's like your reference yesterday, Pink in the Brain. And I got it wrong because it, it was wrong. red. No, I was red and stinky. But you got it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Anyway, whatever's going. Anyway, whatever's going not on. Butter, all right. <laughs> exactly. I oh, know. Asif from Parrot has just said you two are definitely Smashy and Nicey. I don't know who they are. <laughs> Harry Enfield and Paul Whitehouse. <laughs> Brilliant. Ooh, James. James. But if you had to pick walk on music, would have to be the Airwolf theme tune. So basically, um, we have created a Copters theme tune that is going to go on all our webinars, top and tailing, um, our podcast uh, jingles. Everything that we do, you may have heard the Copters Con music as well. We actually modelled it on the Airwolf theme tune. That was the that was the brief. That's <laughs> what we give to the music producer, Airwolf theme tune, because it is absolutely banging. But I still listen to that, that now, and it's popping. <laughs> Did you remember that? I made you listen to no, it on exactly YouTube, and what? you were like, "So we got a lot. We've got quite a young team here as well." <laughs> uh, Making the what Airwolf was. Awesome, man. Adrian, Muppets theme tune. Yeah, Love you, on, Adrian. Move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. <laughs> let, let him in, Chelsea. Exactly. Get him out of it. Get him out of it. <laughs> <Get him out. laughs> right. So, do you know what we should do? Let's do a recap of yesterday because there's some great stuff. So, this is where, um, yeah, Steve Capon, Top Gun. Top Gun. I'll take that. I'm Maverick. He can be Goose. No, 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 no. I'm Iceman. <laughs> I'm Iceman. You Fair Goose. Enough. You Goose. <laughs> You can be my wingman <laughs> any day. <laughs> right, should we do it? Let's move on. Let's, move on. Let's, uh, let's go on to day one. Highlights. So this is where we're going to get a bit technical. We've got to click the right link and there pause it at the right time. There so we we're going to play some highlights. Let's go for it. So this we're going to start with um, day one highlights. And this one here, Copter's gone. Day one highlights. Let's go for it. Choose this media. Chelsea's I mean, you, on hand if we quite a lot um, when you're um, issues. Pricing here we go. Do you, do you hear about? Because we get this and a lot. We'll just as well, play some highlights. Like, people are going in and they just bottom them out. Bottom them out. The market. We get this a lot as well. We're we'll 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 going in and just bottom them out. What happens is the the company that wants the work done doesn't get what they expected it delivered, and then vice versa. It hurts it hurts the wider market. This, this is across every industry in the world. You're always mm. going to get some news feeding along the bottom as cheap as possible. Yeah. You get what you pay for. If you turn up and you look professional, you're in, you're in your nice new van or, you know, as, as, as the, the best van you could possibly turn up in, in nice uniform, your health and safety is good, <clears throat> your insurances are all in date, people are going to use you. Companies will use you. I'm glad you've said that, Ian, because we do get that a lot. And, you know, we, will. we ask people who are starting their own businesses and looking at creating, you know. And I think, I think the other temptation is, especially when you're just starting out, you know, some of you will come back to you and say, oh, I've been, I've been offered it for £200 cheaper. It's very, very tempting to say, mm. OK, I'll match it. You can't match it. You've got to stick to your guns. You've got to be professional and say, look, you're paying for professional service. I'm a professionally trained operator. 
I have the right equipment. I have the right insurances. If this guy comes along and crashes into a crowd of people, who's going to pay for that? You've got to be there and you've got to tell them what it's all about and what you, you know, what, how you operate and yeah. why it will be you. We have a responsibility. I mean, when you think about it, it's still a new technology. So the people that are operating um, have, a, have a responsibility as well to educate yeah. and bring other industries along with us. I think yeah. um, what's interesting about what you said there is, Ian, it's like when you start... Um, so, yeah, this was really exciting when we were talking, we were talking to um, the guys yesterday. We were talking to Ian um, uh, from Networks 3. And what was great with Ian was he was sort of giving people the lowdown of how you can start the drone industry. We get a lot of questions about what people should charge um, for using drones. We get a lot of questions all the time about how you actually go about pricing businesses. And what Ian was saying yesterday was, we're all in this together, guys. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. There's more. There's more demand um, for the drone uses all the all the time. What was the figure you gave me yesterday, Kev? In the next few years, there's supposed to, there's going to be thousands and thousands more drone pilots needed across the UK. Ah, uh, ten years time, six hundred and seventy-eight thousand jobs created over the next ten years within the drone industry. Exactly. So. Um, there's a lot of work to do to get us there. So if you think of UTM, the unmanned traffic management programs that have got to happen in, in cities um, and, and across the UK, but then also the stuff that Drone Prep are doing to push that along with their um, with the great work that they're doing and the case studies that they get in and the consultations that they're doing. Well, we're going to play a clip um, from those guys a little bit later on and it will be accessible. And just what's interesting about that, that, that was the um, part one. That was the first event of yesterday. And um, it was with Ian from Network uh, 3 so you, and Tommy uh, from Flock Drone Insurance. And it was amazing. So if you guys are um, wanting to understand, well, get a little bit more understanding of what it is to uh, adopt drone technology in your business, you want to watch that one. But then also um, what type of insurance you need to uh, get and what you need to consider. But also um, how Tommy's made how Flock have made it really simple they have, haven't they? To, to, to get insurance. It's a data-led approach, but it's really simple. It's not, it doesn't need to be arduous. So what we would say, the big takeaway for me is if you're flying and you're doing a job, um, Flock insurance really easy. I mean, there's a lot of other uh, great um, insurance providers as well, uh, Moonrock, Cover Drone, um, to name a few. Um, but just make sure you're flying safely and legally. That's the key thing. So make sure you've exactly. got the, the right... Um, Make sure you got you registered exactly. And what Tom was saying yesterday was it's so straightforward. Whether you're just driving, just driving, There's something wrong there. Don't be driving. Man. Just flying a drone <laughs> on its own, uh, or if you're flying a large fleet of drones, uh, it's very straightforward to get insured and do it the right way. And Ian backed that up, didn't he? He's had a few yeah, issues, yeah. as Ian. We've <laughs> him up about a few times. Yeah. What did he uh, say? He lost his Elios too. He, he was LAS glad he was insured. He was glad he was insured. Yeah, what did you say? Like, what did you say when he lost it? Oh, who, knows, who, knows, who, knows. who knows? Who knows? Right. So that was uh, that's how we opened yesterday, and then it was a really interesting uh, discussion. If we, on all the uh, full videos from the highlights that we show, you can access um, on the Copterscom website. Is that right, Chelsea? Boom. Right. Next clip. And what's this one from? So this one we've got hardware. This one's from uh, the Energy Summit. So I'm just going to press a little bit on this. We'll go through some highlights. And uh, we'll talk about it afterwards. It's not the energy summit. The surveying summit. Surveying summit. Surveying sorry. summit. Yeah. Here we go. These are four examples of intermediate. These are four examples of, of that's intermediate that's the, that's the surveying summits. Uh, of I'll try again. Here we go. We'll play this one. Yes, we we said, said there would be technical difficulties. Um, we'll for for we'll each we'll need for each service, for, for depending on what job, as as Chris men mentioned earlier, there's a drone for that. There is an ideal drone. There's a drone that might be versatile that can do it. But essentially, if you look at inspection, the brand new Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced is probably an option. Maybe the Parrot, uh, an, um, Parrot USA, which Chris has as well, a really good zoom option there. There's an alternative. Surveying, DJI are always raving about the Phantom 4 RTK. And why wouldn't they? Absolutely awesome. We have the Inspire, which is over my left shoulder, which is more for cinematography and media. Absolutely gorgeous when you see it fly. Um, and then again, we've got another alternative of the Phantom 4. We have the multi spectral, which is ideal for agriculture. And we're seeing a lot of them being used at universities for that data capture and that analysis. Um, so, yeah, in the, the main point of this slide is.
depending on what you're looking to get into, there's a drone for that. And through conversations with copters, we're going to find what is going to be the best thing for you. Uh, and then the next step really is to kind of expand on what Chris has said, what my top tips are in terms of starting a business. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just so you know what's happening here, guys. So this was uh, from Chris Flanagan's summit. Now, what was really interesting with Chris was he was going through all things about how to start your own drone business. So any survey providers out there, this is really interesting. Take some of this in. I'm going to start playing it again now. Uh, but what the primary point for what Chris was saying in his in his summit was uh, to start networking, how to network, how to get out there, accept help, you know, take all these different additional ideas and softwares and hardwares and move on with them. It's not necessarily just about having the best equipment and coming to us and spending a fortune. It's about taking advantage of, you know, what we've got to offer, talking to Jamie, um, which he bigs up a lot on here, and I promise you he wasn't paying him. Um, and that'll be help. That'll help boost your drone business. So we'll, I'm going to start playing it a little bit again and uh, we'll walk through these. Walk I know. Through these. I know. I've given Chris some homework, and he's he's got a couple of top tips for us today as well. Uh, so yeah, we'll race through his top tips, and then we'll do a bit more of a Q and A with you, Chris, and we'll, we'll go from there. Happy days. Happy days. So yeah, my top tips. You've probably seen this plastered absolutely everywhere. I've I've said it a million times now. But number one has to be create an Instagram page follow everything drone related and post at least once a day this is a visual social media platform which is ideal for a visual industry all about the data all about what you do what drone you have who you are and it's an online portfolio in a world where we can't meet face to face as much anymore this is ideal um so i've just started my own copters con uh, jamie instagram page so i'll be doing this i'll be trying to follow this to my own tips to let the law um, so yeah, by all means, have a little look at Jamie Corden at copters.com um, or Jamie Corden Copters rather on Instagram. Give it a little follow. I'll be posting loads of little sneaky little leaks and information about new drones and what's going on in the industry. Uh, but yeah, you need to be posting all, all the time. It's all about making noise when it comes to your marketing. Um, number two is website. Is it all up to date? Is it like Instagram? You need to have a bit of a blog on there. What services you provide, who you are, a bit of a bio, and, and what you plan to offer. Chris has done his off call of four of us, and that's plastered all over his website. It's on his emails. It's on every conversation that he has because. And there you go. And there's a snippet from um, Jamie's uh, with Chris how to start a drone business in 12 weeks. And it, it was really great. And um, if you're here and, you th and you're a drone entrepreneur and you want to start a drone business, then that is invaluable. I mean, the insight and uh, information that wisdom that Chris parted in that was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Even though we only showed Jamie talking. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, uh, you want to you watch that because it's got Chris on it. And um, it, it was really great. And if you want a roadmap to success, then there, there it is. And also, um, just going back to Ian from Network, uh, Network 3, he, 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 he's exactly the same in terms of he adopted, what, 2015, he started yeah. as a hobbyist, and then he thought there's something in this and uh, brought it into his operations and uh, never looked back, really. Never looked back. So, yeah. Definitely. Be brilliant. So, excited. We'll move, on to, we'll move on to the next one, which we've got here, which we believe is surveying. Please, uh, please bear with us. As we bring this, we bring this one up and through, and here we go. And like we said, we the the team have left uh, Steve and I to do uh, technical on this. It, it is actually really simple, but here we go. Shall we do it? Let's Hit go it. for it. Let's go for it. Onshore, offshore, oil and gas. Power gel. Onshore, offshore, oil and gas. Power gel. That is obviously the. Uh, M300. This is the M300. Well, we'll go with it. Well, let's go with it. That's the M300. Let's go with it. This is brilliant. I like yeah. this. This is like pot luck, Kev. Yeah, I know. Let's click on the highlight and we'll wing it when we get there. Yeah, Come on. on. I know. M300. Let's go. They, 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 they go, they go, go hand in hand. hand. Construction now with the likes of the L1, the P1, and obviously that thermography camera, the H20T, has a really great application for uh, high precision accuracy in terms of mapping. Utilities I've obviously mentioned, but looking at the likes of 
uh, mapping out uh, new sewers or even culvert inspection. Uh, we had a really cool application where they were trying to um, meander a river so that there was going to be less uh, all the way basically in the river. And what they were doing is they were using drones to map that new new process out. Um, and then obviously the maintenance side. And we'll see that a lot of the time with uh, your day-to-day -day jobs where it is either like a roof inspection, a chimney inspection, uh, mast inspection, stuff like that, where you're going up and you're looking at the integrity of the asset or the building. Um, you know, looking for wear and tear, finding, you know, if there has been any damage after a storm or a lightning strike. Um, and it's it's using the likes of drones, which are being brought in to, to speed that process up, but also make it safer as well. So the main man there. And there we go. And that's uh, that was our very own George Byrne talking through mastering the M300 for drone inspections. And uh, the M300, I'm with you, Chris. Kitson's just put in the chat. M300, quality piece of kit. Love getting this drone out. Um, when it when it first launched, they were saying it's the uh, workhorse. Exactly. Um, the, and it, it, it can do everything. And with the L1 and P1 coming out, exactly. um, it's now uh, branching out into uh, surveying. And uh, I know uh, our very own Jim Pick has been uh, quite impressed. Quite Definitely. impressed with it. Definitely. He's back in this. He's back in this drone a lot. This Jim, um, the RTK accuracy and the Pinu P1 camera. It really mm -hmm. is turning into the all-around drone. Yeah. EGI releasing a lot of different payloads. It's safe to say that this drone's going to be around a long time. Just seen a question from you here, Gareth. Uh, I can answer that for you. So how much investment do you need in drones? I have an Inspire 1 Pro, but already out of date. Yeah, well, the, to be fair, I think the Inspire 1 came out a fair few years ago now, and drones are. There's no getting away from it there. Well, it's a changing industry. But I think there'll be a lot of people on here who I can see that will back me up when they say, you don't necessarily need an initial large outlay investment to really get started, but it depends what you're using them for. I mean, we've got photographers using the, the Mavic 2 Pro, which is a drone, any, off the top of my head, around 1,500 pounds. But then if you want in the M300 where you can really start charging the good business and making a bit of money from it that way, then you can charge X amount per day, but then that's gonna be a significantly larger outlay. So yeah, it'd be great, um, we'll have, uh, as a wait, wait for Coptus to offer an M300 as a prize for attending Coptus Comp. There you go, Adrian. Step ahead. Step ahead of us. That will not be happening, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> or will it? Or will it? You'll need to watch every <laughs> single event just to find out in case you miss it. In case you miss it. So, so last clip um, from the um, Surveying Summit with uh, Jim Pick. Phase one, Buckingham Group, um, position air, air surveys. You've Let's said it now, it. Kev. You've said it now, surveying. We're going to go for it. We're going to try it. I know it's surveying because we only pulled four videos out to oh. as highlights. So <laughs> it's just, um, can't go wrong. <laughs> right, here go. we go. listening, um, really great opportunity or listening to um, a really great opportunity to, to fire uh, any questions you have to uh, manufacture, people using drones in the field. Like that. So it's a really great opportunity to put your questions down on the panel at the side um, and really get some really great in-depth knowledge um, uh, from, from, from people on the panel. So really ask us anything, uh, no holes barred, um, and we'll be more than happy to help. So I'm going to start with you, Simon. Um, as you've kind of touched on with your introduction, you, you've work, worked previously for a, a survey company and uh, decided to, to, to start, start on your own. Um, why was it... Why was drones something which was which was on the top of your list of priorities when when starting um, starting up on yourselves? Well, it it comes out of um, the the buzzword of drones in the industry as as a general. So, you know, it's something that I've been looking at for you know a number of years, and it's for my last company that I was working with. It's a service that we tended to buy in um, with the with the you know the, the um, administration that goes with not only a, you know, completing your training but uh, you know maintaining your operations manual and the safety aspects of all of that um and it's it's about the clients clients are now you know every question comes through can we use a drone you know they're not necessarily understanding what the drone can give them but it's the buzzword in the industry so they're looking to say well how can we adopt this this sort of technology and this this uh, practices and measuring techniques within the survey because on one hand it could potentially be a cheaper exercise uh, large data gathering exercise um, instead of 
instead of um, you know getting boots on the ground for you know two three square kilometers of, of river floodplains for example you know you can utilize drone technology to do that in a, in a faster quicker manner uh, and, and in a safer manner so um, that was the reason why you know it's something that I, I'd kept my eye on um, and as I say the, the pandemic sort of was a natural progression point for me to say well this is a good opportunity to go and and, and investigate drones, get trained to do drones, and, and concentrate on, on pushing myself forward technically on that ability to, to use those uh, those tools to collect data, whilst maintaining the, the remainder of my experience. You know, I still go out laser scanning, etc. One of the things I'm trying to do is combine those those data sets. So, how can we use single point measurements in the field? How can we use data collection like laser scanning and combine that with drone technology and the data that that's providing? Um, to create one homogenous set for uh, for pushing through for, for clients. Uh, and then it doesn't have to go through that whole process of, you know. And there you go. And that was a clip from um, the Surveying Summit yesterday with uh, Jim Pick, Phase 1, Buckingham Group and Precision Air Surveys. I tell you what, if you were to stereotype what uh, surveyors would look like, those pictures definitely all look like surveyors. Definitely for surveyors. sure, for sure. Um, but, but, that's, but that's, you know what? What's great about that is, and um, they were talking about it there, it's um, it's the buzzword in the uh, civilian industry at the moment, uh, and rightly so. Definitely. And it's not going to replace uh, traditional uh, surveying uh, techniques. It's it's another uh, tool within your toolbox to deliver great quality data. This is the thing, a drone can't analyze data to the extent that a person can or either know where to take the data. So I think what happens a lot with drones, and with any industry that's modernizing, People get a little bit, you know, oh no, what drones are going to take the jobs? It's definitely not the case. In the surveying sector, it's going to enhance the jobs, make you more efficient, and make you be able to do more jobs out there. Mm -hmm. You look around the UK now, we're in the centre of Leeds. The amount of building work going on here, you'll walk around, we'll see Phantom 4 RTKs just hovering above a, a building site every now and now, surveying. And, it's only going to get more and more. We're negotiating with company now regarding uh, ground penetrating radar, which is really exciting, mm -hmm. and that's going to take over. So, yeah, wind surveying drones or something there is definitely coming. It's definitely staying, and it's going to really enhance that industry. Yeah, big time, big time. So do you know what? That was just a, a few uh, highlights and clips from um, four of the events that we had yesterday. You can access the full videos on Coptus.com, so every single one. Um, and then what we want to do as well is let's just do a recap because we've just done day, day one, but let's just look ahead now to uh, day two. What we got next? Let's quick run through at 10:30. After this, we've got the energy summit. That is going to be awesome. We got um, some some organisations in that that are doing amazing things. Definitely, we're definitely. Looking at Northumbria Water Seven Trent. Seven Trent definitely paved the way in the water. There's seven water institutes in the UK. Uh, seven Trent def water board. Sorry. Seven Trent definitely paved the way when it came to that. Mm -hmm. uh, Duncan Turner, who we work a lot with, um, he's really exciting. He leads the drone team at Seven Trent, and I talk a lot about Duncan because he's certainly. We talk a lot about smaller people in um, boosting their business with drones. Duncan's done it the other way. Huge, obviously, water board, but he's really enhanced it and made them more efficient. And he's trialing things with DGI and for Wing Chair and for liability out there and really getting really getting them going so really was, driving it forward definitely. really driving it definitely. forward and a real ambassador uh for drums That's and it. then you've got Northumbria water as well um sellerfield mm -hmm. and um caroline from network x I've, i nearly said it network, network, network x. x that's the porn no, channel network three yeah i know that's, <laughs> that's what ian said ian said that yesterday not us um uh, we did question him yes. um why he knew that um, Sorry, that was a have to be there moment. Well, yeah, it was. It was. It was. Yeah, I'm glad that was in the highlights. <laughs> exactly. in the highlight video reel that the team. Because I could imagine them doing something like that to us. Exactly. And then straight after that, we have got saving the environment with Winter and Project Seagrass. Can't wait for that one. Um, that's from 11:45 till 12:30. Yeah, absolutely, and that's where Jim um, from Copters, Terence from Winter, and Doctor Richard Lilly from Project Seagrass, and I know. Um, when you talk about drones being a, a buzzword and um, front and center, climate change, Definitely. the environment, uh, reducing our carbon footprint, what world are we going to leave behind for the future generations? I've got a two-year-old daughter. It's, it completely changed my perspective because I don't want to get, I don't want her to get to 15 years old 
and uh, her to ask me the question, if you knew, why didn't you do something about it? Because that's what's going to come. So I've completely changed my ways. Um, it's a it's a journey. It's a it's a pro yeah. It's a process. You're not just suddenly going to um, go from there to there instantly. But um, if everybody starts the journey, then we might have a chance of uh, turning climate change around and leaving something really nice for future generations. And what Project Seagrass are doing are all part of that. But let's move on. Then straight after that, live. Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Inspection with Geo Access. Oh, that's going to be exciting. We've got some fantastic uh, offers going on with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, but the main thing about this one is it's live. So if you want to see any outtakes at the end, hopefully not. You never know. <laughs> oh, oh and we are going live. Yeah, it's live, live. <laughs> live, it is live, 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 so live, 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 like this one. Exactly. Live, live. <laughs> I, I get that. So it's live. Definitely. Yeah. And then straight after that, we go into the Parrot and Appy USA showcase, launched in 60 seconds with Sam Dennett and Asif from Parrot. And it's called Launched in 60 Seconds. Um, we are riffing on movies, so that was a uh, riff on Gone in 60 Seconds. Uh, but this is Launched in 60 Seconds because Parrot and Appy USA have created a drone that can be operational in the air, giving you vital aerial intelligence less than 60 seconds. Amazing. That is an amazing drone. Think about that. Think about that. You can have a drone in the in the field, in a battle, and it can be up 60 seconds, saving lives, basically. Think about police as well. Police. Unbelievable. And then if you saw yesterday's Eye in the Sky Summit with uh, Lorenz, plan, uh, Lorenz Technology, Plant for Gampers and Typhon, you'll know that the Parrot and USA and Parrot as a whole are all about the, the ecosystem. That, that goes around it and collaboration and uh, partnerships with other uh, innovators within the drone industry. So Clank, love that, love what they're doing. I, it teams up with the, you partner up with the partner for USA, the plant can be on a moving vehicle, speedboat, car, and then as the vehicle's moving, the partner for USA will land on it. Can you imagine? That's like something out of Mission Impossible, isn't it? Imagine a yeah, speedboat yeah. going down, you know, the south of France. Absolutely. With the baddies on the Harley Davidson is flying along, and the parrot and Affy lands on the plank on the back of a speedboat. That's all I've got in my head. Amazing. And it's a lot cheaper than getting Tom Cruise for the day. That's it. There we Boom. go. <laughs> Absolutely. And then straight after that, and that's at two o'clock today. It's going to be a great one. And then um, straight after that, like we say, it's also about the data. So how to get the most out of your survey data with Pix4D, and that's another one with Jim uh, from Copters, but we got Nate from Pix4D and Carangelo from Pix4D as well. And so you got it right. I know. I, right. Well, I've, I've, I've had four or five goals at it now <laughs> over the uh, two days. I feel like if I got it wrong now, well, I'm not learning. Something wrong. Something. <laughs> yeah. And then that's at uh, 3.5 to 4.30. And am I right in thinking? Um, Pix 4D. When we talk about ecosystems, product ecosystems, who owns Pix 4D? Parrot. Parrot. There so you when go. you talk about um, an organization that's really committed to the drone industry, and um, oh, Asif's just put it up on the chat. He's absolutely beating oh, us yeah. to it. Come on, Asif. <laughs> oh, Asif, we're getting there. We're, we're getting, getting there. there. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, so um, what Parrot do? What I love about Parrot is that they're always um, looking into the future. Definitely. So they know where the industry's going. Their, their finger is on the pulse. And um, the other key thing is that um, they build technology that um, people actually need, solves problems. Um, so it's really cool. That's at 3.45. And then straight after that, drones for public safety. And you'll hear a lot about um, the partner after USA in there as well. And that's with Sam um, from Copters, Nick from Northampton Search and Rescue, Randall Warnish from Fleur, big heavy hitter in the drone industry. Um, Godfather, one of the Godfathers, really, been there from the start. Then we've got Perry Smith from Norfolk Fire. And we got West Yorkshire Police. So, so many different... Um, Use cases, so Definitely. many different use oh, cases. Exciting. And then, Copters Recognition, recognition Awards. Awards. So get your votes in by 12.30. Chelsea's put the link in the in the bio there. So this is for anyone that you think is out doing the market, something innovative. That's the stuff that really excites me. I can't speak to all the judges. I'm one of the judges on the, board, on the panel, by the way. 
but I like innovation, I like new uses, and that's what I really want to see. So I'm hoping that there's going to be a lot of different ideas and something that's going to blow my mind as we'll see yeah, people yeah. using drones for. Absolutely. And what's really cool about this is we've got Richard Nichols um, from Airward, who's also a judge, and he is um, doing... He's actually set up and the founder of the Global Drone Awards. So it's really cool that we've got Richard on our um, Copters Recognition Awards because um, Air Awards is absolutely massive. It's, um, it's its first year. There's so many great people involved in that, so many great organizations. So it'll be awesome to have Richard as a judge on this as well. And then we've also got Adam Watkins from Area. Uh, Area. Aero Media. But um, also with Adam, if you've ever done, if you've done your PFCO GVC with us and you've done it in Cardiff, Adam's probably, you'll know Adam from fame of taking the flight tests. So that'll be really exciting. If you're on there, you'll, you'll, you'll recognise Adam. Hopefully you'll recognise me by that point. And you'll certainly be hearing a lot from Richard going forward into the global air walls that they'll be bringing. So that's, that's really great as well. Uh, Richard's, uh, Richard's actually watching. So he's, uh, yeah, Richard, uh, we're really pleased to, to have you part of it. And um, I can't wait for air walls as well and just see how that grows year on year. Um, amazing stuff. And if, if you ever wanted, Richard actually absolutely opened my eyes to... Um, all the great things that you could get on subscription. So the, one of the yeah. very first um, video calls me and Richard had together, um, we were obviously talking about Air Awards and how we could, uh, Coptus could support it. But then he showed me all these subscriptions that he actually has. And one of them was like, you get these burger, burgers just on subscription, just sent to your house. And it's like a proper burger kit. Like, there it's, like, goes. it's the like, there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what you see in the chat. <laughs> this is a drone. We do this every time Richard's on. We end up talking about burgers. Yeah, I know, because it was like, Richard, Richard swears by it. He swears by it. But um, And then that's how we're going to wrap up. Um, like I say, everything is going to be available. All videos are going to be available um, on Copters Con, so the film is for everybody to watch. And then... Uh, hey, sorry, hang on, is, hey, hang on a minute. Hey. Who is this? We're getting hey. echoed there. Who Let's is have, this, Adrian? We can't be <laughs> <laughs> Faces for radio. Yeah. Well. Have you seen this face, Adrian? <laughs> Have you seen it? <laughs> he might be right about you, though. Yeah. From yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be, uh, thanks for being <laughs> um, What we think is, there's a couple of other things that we talk about. So um, we've got a resource center. So if people want to um, find out about all the different types of training, you can download the training brochure, training guides. We've got. Um, Ghost for surveying guides that has all the drones from Wintra um, to the M300 in there. And then and the uh, Phantom 4 RTK. Then we've got um, drones for inspection that has all the um, drones. And not just the drones, but it's the hardware, the software, um, the training, and the ongoing support. That um, You know what? Most people, when they're adopting um, year one, adopting drone technology, starting a drone business, um, you want that support, right? That's like... You, you want it and it's not just as um we, we hear a lot of people who um get all the information want to start a drone business and then they go buy the drone from argos and then it's like <laughs> it's like um and then oh, uh, wish if he was wish. wish 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 what is that still going that's still going is wish wish you can you can get a mavic 2 for 40 pounds oh, from wish yeah I, yeah, I remember when I tried to already <laughs> order a Sony 60-inch TV from there for 60 quid. <laughs> no, I didn't really. I didn't really. But people do that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh. And then Richard, what's Richard saying? Oh, yeah, Richard. See, Rich is with us, man. He knows. Backing us this up. Backing us up. Thanks, yeah, Richard. Yeah, absolutely. And then, Safe to say, Adrian won't be getting my vote later in the uh, recognition awards. Well, or he could. I mean, I might, I might vote for him because... <laughs> Who knows? He's, he's been good value on this session. Um, what we've also got as well, guys, is throughout the day, live commentary on Twitter and Facebook. So if you want um, to uh, just follow key highlights, if you need to miss an event, but you just want to still get find out what's going on, uh, just go onto our Copters uh, Twitter page or Facebook page, and there is live threads going where we'll just push highlights out and little uh, quotes from um, what all our great uh, speakers are uh, talking about. And then, um, like I said, all the videos are going to be available for Copscon. So when you actually think about it, that's like 18 hours of drone footage across, um, well, the whole industry, all the verticals. 
definitely. This is, amazing. this is amazing. This is amazing. So we're going to have that much content, but that much tailored content to what you're wanting to, to achieve. Whether you're looking at everything, whether you're just coming and doing one or two, that's great. It would be great to hear your feedback. Also, please don't think that this is it. Please reach out, speak to one of the strategists here. Be happy to help, happy to have one-to-ones, um, happy to point you in the right direction. Yeah, big time. And then do you know what we should do now? Let's give us a little sneak peek of the drone prep um, uh, video that we did with um, Emily and Gareth because it was absolutely great. We talked about so many things. Not that one, though, because that's just me doing the intro. We're going to put it to the time um, slot, which is a clip. Now, this whole video is going to be available. Um, we did this um, pre-recorded, so I'm actually in my um, home office and... Uh, Emily and Gareth are up in sunny Scotland. You can probably tell by the curtains. <laughs> That's that, it. They are Scottish curtains. I, I, and I can say this. I'm, Scotland to me is the motherland. <laughs> um, it's where I was born. Dundee, East Coast. I always get great delight when I say, what, what's, what side are you uh, from Scotland from? And I'm like, east side. <laughs> what, what, not west side, east side. East and then you do it in that voice. But anyway, here we go. So let's just watch this clip because we talked about so many different things and what these guys are doing. They are really pushing the drone industry forward and making it better and more accessible for every single drone pilot and every single organization that wants to drop drone technology drone technology, even if they don't know yet that they want to adopt it. These guys are paving the way to make it as accessible as possible. So we talk about a lot of great things, but we're going to show this clip and then let's just go from there. Brilliant. Let's do it. Mm. Basically. So I, I completely agree with you. I think um, th th I, what I'm trying to say is there's, there's limits on what we can do in the next year or possibly two years, because from a regulatory perspective, from a tech perspective, from an investment perspective, there are lots of barriers to overcome. Um, but the exciting thing is we're on that little pathway now and, and COVID actually and all the yeah, other yeah. that's happened in that has hugely accelerated it and that's why it's such an exciting space to work in. I mean, my background before uh, drone prep was um, time country planning, transport planning and, you know, that lovely utopian vision of, okay, there you go. we can all have sort of flying cars and drone, uh, drones with people in them and design the built environment around something completely different you know at the moment we're all used to the world that we inhabit which is like focused around the car and all the buildings all the infrastructure on the ground has been designed around that um absolutely be wonderful technology really does go somewhere interesting and we can design buildings and streets and places around urban air mobility and drones and actually as, as you know human beings recapture some of the street for our own purposes you know for having picnics amazing walking and not having physical barriers to overcome. I think that, that's usually exciting. And it's um, proven as well, isn't it? It's like, uh, you don't even need drone technology to see the examples. Um, I, I think it was about four years ago, I visited this school um, and it was built brand new, but the school was built for people, for the main, the primary mode of transport to be bikes. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. So guess, what, actually... so guess what happened? So guess what happened? Everything around, people just didn't come in the cars. They, they, funnily enough, they came on the bikes, and then everything that built up around the school was built on bikes. So the paths and the main entrance into the school, it was all done to make a, a child safety a priority because it's like the Wild West when you go, when you try, when you walk past schools during drop off or pick up time. It's like people on the four by fours on the pavements. Yeah. But this school behavior change, if it it's like Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner. I think you might be old enough to know this film, Gareth. It's like, build it, they will come. But it's like, if you, if we put, if we're our own worst enemy. We put the barriers in ourselves. Um, drum port. So we, we've got, we've spoken um, a lot uh, there, guys. I mean, we've gone from farmers to cattle, Isle of Mole, Eyesight, the, par the partnership, the amazing work that you're doing. How you doing this consultation with three thousand people? I think and um, how you um, how you've been breaking down barriers and kind of getting getting a sense of how drone prep came to be and it started with conversations and it but it actually started from I guess some of the problems and frustrations that you had as a drone pilot and so we've gone from there we are where we are now you're doing a massive consultation with Ilamo but you mentioned something earlier that um, I, I wanted us to uh, come back to because I. I bet there's a lot of people that will be really interested in this, but don't know too much about it yet. And I'm hoping that you guys will be able to um, give us the give us the lowdown. Because I want to know as well. 
talk to us about did you see drum ports and did you see angus yeah i did so yeah, i mean it's still fish around the country at the moment um i think a lot of commercial entities have understood that drones are doing some pretty cool stuff uh, especially when it comes to delivery and actually we have airports at the moment we're all quite familiar with those um and actually the whole aviation space has taken this big big hit during covid and i think no one's really sure what the aviation sector is going to look like when we come out of it you know all the all the sort of airlines that we use are they still going to be there are lots of pilots you know still going to have their jobs They're like we've got such a huge heritage in the aviation sector in this country we invented most of it and retained quite a lot of quality here over the years um, and we've got this thing now, which we call like the third revolution of, of flight, which is drones. Um, and a lot of people potentially sort of looking into that new technology to see where it fits in with the airport model. So you've currently got a number of different airports, forward thinking airports up and down the land that are looking at uh, integrating with drones, but also looking at UAM and eVTOLs, um, how they can sit alongside uh, manned aviation and, and complement them and do some amazing things. And then you've, on, on the counter side, you've also got some places that are historically well known for their ports. Um, so coastal mm -hmm. areas, like Angus, um, Montrose, for example, and then down in Southampton, where they're serving all these different use cases, both onshore and offshore. And the question to them is like, OK, how can we improve what we already do really well, but with drones? Um, mm -hmm. And that's the opportunity. So there's, there's probably about five places that we know of up and down the land that are really making some good strides in, in that particular area. Um, the one that we're visiting later this week is in Angus. They recently had some funding uh, from the Scottish government to explore actually this drone port concept, which is hugely exciting. Um, and it links back to the past as well. It's one of the, I think it's like one of the first two or three airfields that ever existed in the UK. And that's where they plan to base the thing out of it. So it's got this lovely sort of nod to the past. Yeah. Um, usually, I mean, Angus is, is such a fascinating place because its economy is built uh, both on the sea but also on, on the land. You've got a number of offshore wind farms, you've got oil rigs not too far away, you've got 24,000 merchant navy vessels like hanging around the coast there somewhere. Um, and even little things like, you know, how, how do you get sort of COVID tests out to people after a pandemic that are offshore, that offshore community? You know, how, how do you get next day delivery to those places? Um, and these are the types of use cases that drone ports are likely to explore in the short term uh, and then when they become more established then it might be linking up different places that previously haven't been connected by a, a type of aircraft so other, other oh. things that we're looking at with some of our partners and some of our drone port partners is you know, can we set up a drone port where there's been no history of aviation but actually you know the, the logistics of getting there is really challenging and often airports are super expensive places to build and service but drones tend to be autonomous and actually you know the, the amount of land that you need to to have a drone port is small. Um, so why not look at this new technology and see if it can answer questions that haven't been answered yet? And if you're a logistics company, um, could you even put a drone port on one of your new big massive warehouses, for example, so you can connect all yeah. the warehouses together? Like with this vertical takeoff capability, um, you know, this sort of stuff isn't in science anymore. You know, in the future science, it's kind of like we could we could potentially do this now. Let's explore the viability of it. So as I say, there's a few around the country. A lot of them have been either primed by government funds or venture capital. Um, our our solution is like let's get in there and engage like we always do and try and find those commercial mm -hmm. routes or anyone wastes too much money on stuff that doesn't work. And that's that's what we're here to do is to engage and find find those little connections and see where it all fits together. And then everyone's happy because we've got a real world yeah. project that works cool technology involving drones so that's the aim of the aim of the game it all sounds like it's it, it sounds like it's all happening up in scotland at the moment yeah. we, well, we, is, which is yeah. amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um you can you can check out more about some of the fun stuff in cornwall though i think yeah how much we'd have to say though well um, i no. think you can say oh, oh, oh. oh. You can't say yeah. that. And if you want to find out well, what was said, I've always wanted to do it Game of Thrones style. Oh, oh. but I there didn't is. Know who's gonna do it. <laughs> and I do not approve. <laughs> you wanted to know you were engaged, right? Well, but uh, that were those guys there, uh, Gareth and Emily. They're so knowledgeable, and what they're doing within the industry. This is what I was saying. They are pushing the industry forward and making it so much better for everybody within the UK. Not just the pilots, but organisations as well. But if you want to find out if they did 
say stuff that they couldn't or where that went, then make sure that you watch the full did video. They say stuff that they couldn't, did they? Did they say you need to watch it to find out. You need to watch it to find out. That's all I'm saying. But it was amazing. It was amazing. I know what I'm doing after this. What you do? Make, just make watching the rest copy. of it. It's your, it's your turn for the copy, right? Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Then you can um, watch it. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. No, no, you can watch it whenever you want. Cool. So I feel like uh, that was the drone prep one, and it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, I could I could have sat there talking to those guys for hours. They only give me they only give me an hour. <laughs> and it was like we could have talked for more. I felt we only scratched the surface of everything that they were doing. Definitely, really drone cool. and what's been great is uh, Emily and Nat. She's been in Women with Drones. Uh, done a lot of work with copters already, and it's been great to listen to uh, Emily about the insight that she's given into the drone industry because she's quite well, she's not new to it, is she? But she's sort of she's sort of young and coming into a, 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 an already established organisation, but with fresh eyes. It's great, great to listen to her talk about it absolutely and um, i think i think her uh, role is innovation lead so the clues in the title uh, and what she's bringing and she's heavily involved in the uh, consultation in the ilmo with the three thousand residents and what's cool about when you listen to it man these three thousand this isn't a consultation where you just bang a survey out these residents are all having drone landing pads put in the garden <laughs> and then royal mail are going to de start delivering drill we use the drones into these guys' gardens. And then this is going to be the use case. And then the learnings from this are going to inform how it how it rolls out across the UK, hopefully. Probably the world. So, so watch this space. And we were talking about it as well. It's like, this is what needs to happen. I mean, you probably saw that uh, article in the Scottish Sun, going back to Scotland again, about the Glasgow Curry House. He's going to deliver chicken kermas with a Bantam 4 RTK. Uh, probably not. <laughs> in a built up area. But, but, it's coming. And, what the guys at Drone Brand, I'm not saying that they're paving the way for um, curry houses to start delivering um, curries by drones, but it's the same principle. You've got to do, you, there's a process to these kind of things. You can't just start doing that. You need to go through the process. And that's what Drone Prep are doing. They're opening the doors, breaking down barriers, climbing mountains for the drone industry to flourish that's over the next it. few that's years. It. You'll be soon be getting your madras from a Mavic. <laughs> the new DJI Madras 3 will be out soon. <laughs> Come to be word. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm on again tomorrow. Oh my God. You left that you're on chill. I am. Yeah, you are. Right. Any on. more drone pun, drone fast food puns, welcome <laughs> in the uh, box below. Um, Adrian, I'm sure you've got some good ones. Yeah, absolutely. I can't believe that. <laughs> Flint has been talking about how he's been drawn in Scotland for a good while now. West Side is more rugged, <laughs> cracking shots. Come on. East is flat, but East has got the better coastline. When you take that East coastline on a train all the way up, especially when you go from Inverness all the way to um, Thurzel and John O'Groats, I'm telling you now, there is no better train ride. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Neil Chapman and Mavras 3. Very good, very good. Yeah, I, like I like it. I like it. So we're getting told that our time is up. We've gone over our hour mark. Um, so let's just do a quick recap. Um, I mean, we're super excited. Um, we're, we're loving Copters Com. We're loving all the um, how the industry's come together. We're really excited about all the events and key speakers and the hardware and the software, the training, the sporting that we're going to be showcasing today. If you miss anything, you can um, access it through Copters Com, the full videos. Um, and then let's just quickly, quick run through, quick run through now. Um, after this, 10.30, we have the Energy Summit. That's a big boy. Then so we're here with George Byrne, our very own George Byrne. George, yeah. you just want to quickly come in? Very quick. <laughs> here he is. Here he is. He's just coming in. He's just prepping up. Here's George Byrne. George, get, just give us a little um, five, um, yeah, just give us a little 60 second run through of what people can expect from what's coming on at 10.30. Yeah, brilliant, 10.30, so we've got the Energy Summit, really excited actually, we've got some big names on there, so we're going to be talking all about their, their current projects, what they're using, how they got started, and uh, yeah, looks for the future, really exciting stuff. Amazing. Thanks, George. <laughs> so, 10.30, Energy Summit with George. We're just saying thanks, George. And then straight after that, 11.45, sitting in the environment with Wintra and Seagrass. Dr. Richard Lilly and Jim and yep. Wintra. They're Absolutely. all there. Terrence, Terrence from Wintra. And then at 1 o'clock, we have the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance live with Geo Access. Live. Sure, George is on that as well, oh, right? Man, George is awesome. He's got a big day today. He does, he does. Right, he's, he's one of our big players. He is, certainly. 
I'm always on the pitch, aren't it? What, what position do you play, George? Football? Oh, centre mid, box to box. Centre mid, <laughs> box to box. That's why he's involved all day long. Box to box, got an engine to die for. <laughs> and then straight after that, two o'clock, Parrot and Appy USC with uh, Asif from Parrot. Cannot wait for that. Straight after that, 3.45 well, to Not 4, straight 30. off. We've got a little bit of a break, haven't we? We've got 45 minutes, a little bit of a when you've taken in too much there. Yeah, it's not And then we go after. into survey, right. 3.45 to 4.30. Pix 4D. Pix 4D. Pix 4D with survey, going into some data, really showing you how to use cases for that. But also, it's going to be offers and bits and pieces happening all day, guys. So make sure you make sure you tune in to each one and we'll uh, we'll get through it. But straight Absolutely. after survey. Not straight after. There's always a little break, as we just said. A little break. Five o'clock, six o'clock, public safety summit. Um, a lot of big names on that as well. Randall from Fleur, but then also Northampton section rescue, uh, North of Fire, West Yorkshire Police. Um, are all on there and then right to end the day we are going with the copters recognition awards at 6 30 to 7 30 which is going to be brilliant that's with myself richard from air awards and adam from air media so Boom. we're looking forward to that just remember at the end of each webinar they're all on separate links so at the end of each one we're going to send you the one for the energy summit out in there now if you have to click on that move on to the next one absolutely um, and then we'll see you there at 10 30 so and if you don't and if you don't watch um the, the the event previous it will land in your email inbox all you need to do is just click the link and you will get to the next one and remember live commentary on twitter and facebook and um, so follow everything that you need resource center copters con forward slash resources everything you need is on there as well guys Thank you very much for tuning in to Drones for Good Breakfast Club. Hope you loved the recap from yesterday. Hope you loved the drum prep um, highlight that we showed as well. And then we will see you soon. We look Have a great one, guys. Like. So remember, the link will be sent to you uh, inbox for the Energy Summit. Perfect. And if anyone wants a one to one, please feel free to get in touch uh, either by phone or drop us an email at sales at copters.com. And someone will be in touch with the same day. 12.30 is the cutoff point for uh, nominations for the Recognition Awards. So you've still got time to get that £1,000 train voucher. Anything else we can run in at their end? Probably not, I think. Not. Probably not. We're getting told <laughs> to get off. See you later, guys. Have a good one.